What's up guys? So today I decided we would give another shot at installing the leveling kit on the truck. I think I figured out a way that I can get it up in the air safely using my lift in the garage. So I just unboxed everything that comes with this leveling kit. Um, if you aren't familiar with what a leveling kit is, essentially it's uh, just picture a giant spacer that lifts the front end of the truck up so it's level with the rear. Now it's almost 100% for aesthetics. I guess you can fit a bigger tire too, which is the main reason why I'm doing it. I just don't want to get into the complications of like a lift kit and everything and this retains the stock suspension and it's supposed to maintain the same type of feel and drive how it was intended to drive. So it's extremely simple, especially for someone who doesn't even know anything about trucks like myself. This basically goes on top of the spring, spaces that. This is a bracket that's essentially a spacer for the shock, spacer for the bump stop, Spacer for the sway bar, it's very self-explanatory. Everything's two and a half inches just to raise the front of the truck two and a half inches. I think these are uh, like brackets for the brake lines. And then this is a weird part that I guess doesn't come with all their kits, but I read in the forums, a lot of people recommend it. It's called a track bar relocation bracket. And I guess when you level these trucks, it throws the steering wheel off and I guess you have to go get an alignment or adjust the steering wheel. And this is supposed to correct that. So I'm hoping it'll be pretty self-explanatory. I really want to try to do this myself because I don't know, working on that truck is really fun because everything's new and fresh, like the bolts and stuff. So what I did this time was uh, basically line the mirrors of the truck up with the lift so that way I have less weight over the front. And I just lifted the front end of the truck. Not much. I don't really like using the lift like this with only one foot because it has a tendency to actually roll back. By one I mean two because there's one on the other side. So I have it just high enough to be able to spin the wheel. And the main reason why I'm using the lift is because my jack really doesn't go high enough and uh, ideally you should have both sides of the truck up at the same time, especially when you're working with the sway bar and stuff. I am warning you, uh, I have to have the door open because of this and it gets extremely hot in here when I don't have the AC like sealed off. So I'll probably be drenched by the time we're done. It comes with really detailed instructions that seem like they're gonna help. Um, it's not very clear as to whether I should take the front wheels off or not. I've read online that some leveling kits recommend you leave them on, some recommend you take them off. For the sake of the video, I'm gonna take it off so you can actually see what I'm doing in there. Um, but I might have to put it back on because I'm guessing maybe it wants you to use the weight to decompress the spring. Oh, that's a heavy wheel. These are my little car wheels. Take a minute and admire your truck because you've never seen this side of a vehicle before other than a 240SX. I'm gonna wipe everything down because why not? If I'm filming a video in here, I might as well make it look nice. Next it says to remove the sway bar at the frame. The bracket for the brake line. Sway bar is now loose. Pretty much standard coilover procedure is supporting the axle with the jack. When we unbolt the shock, it's not just gonna drop. I'm so used to working on Nissans that all these weird sized sockets are throwing me off. Jack it up a little bit. Now we can lower it down. Just want to get enough so we can slide the spacer on top of the spring. This is where I'm thinking I might need to put the wheel back on in order to get this down enough. The trick was just that I had to unbolt the other side and then pretty much the whole axle drops down super low, which gives me plenty of room to spin the spring out and remove this cushion that's gonna get reused on the spacer. So it looks like this little rubber spacer is gonna go on top of this. And then we're gonna have the little rubber thing that goes on the bottom of this that the spring will thread into, or spin into, I should say. I don't know if I'd say thread into. Look at that. We'll jack it up to hold the spring in place. Next up, we get to install the spacers for the sway bar. Um, kind of weird, I guess, in my videos, you don't really see me using this much, but uh, we're gonna use a torque wrench for this. You know, this is a new truck and I don't want stuff coming loose, so I'm actually going to follow the instructions. I'm going to torque everything to spec. So this just kind of reuses the factory hardware. This is such a terrible torque wrench, but I guess it works. I think I bought this at like Lowe's. I'm surprised it's only 25 foot pounds, I wonder why. The hardest part of the installation so far was getting the wrench in here to hold this nut while I torque this down on the uh, spacer for the sway bar. But thankfully, I have help here now. My friend Brett showed up, and what's kind of funny is I thought he was someone else that I didn't want to come visit. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry Brett. But, and then he showed up and I was like, oh, you're here? That's exciting. <laughs>
need that mallet if you don't mind grabbing it for me. And my payment is... It's hard because I can't... Full hammer in there, you know? What? God, that trans is gigantic. I'll just do damage to an $80,000 truck as well. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the bumps, bump stop just like pulls out. Oh, ow, that hurt. <laughs> oh, so this spacer just goes like on the other end of that thing. There's a big hunk of metal. Trucks are so easy to work on compared to cars. Well, yeah, well this this came detached from up here. It looks like a vacuum line for something, but I don't know what I'm trying to see what the vacuum line is going to. I just thought about that. You have like basically a random stranger working on your truck. No, I don't care. <laughs> it's funny to me, like anything that's not a drift car is so seemingly unimportant in terms of working on it. Because it's like not like this we're gonna be going sideways at 90 miles an hour. <laughs> Except this is telling the vehicle. <laughs> Send the new side, then... Yeah, that's true. That's true. All right, so this thing looks miserable to install the track bar relocation bracket. Um, it's really boring in here without music, so I'm gonna put music on, and because of that, I can't film. So I'm going to just leave it on for a time lapse, and we'll be miserable trying to install this. Time lapse start now. The camera actually died last night, but we got it all finished up. Brett was a huge help, and now it's looking sick. Definitely quite a noticeable difference. I'm really happy with how it looks, and it's gonna look so much better once we get wheels for it. The only real issue, um, alignment was fine. I went and drove the truck, no weird noises, everything drove straight, but the steering wheel was off a little bit. I guess that track relocation bracket really didn't do much. So I found out there's actually a little adjustment right here where you just like loosen these nuts and this, and you can spin it, and it moves this bar that attaches to the steering column or whatever, and uh, I was able to straighten the steering wheel out from this. So now it's all good, I don't even have to take it anywhere. The only thing you can really notice from the outside is this little ready lift thing right here. Um, I guess it kind of looks cool, but overall, really happy with how it looks. And ultimately, I'm glad we ended up doing it here instead of bringing it somewhere because it was a lot of fun and now I understand if anything goes wrong, kind of how everything was put together. I do also want to just put out there again and remind you guys that I have absolutely no clue what I'm doing with any of this stuff. I saw a comment the other day asking if I ever went to like mechanic school or anything because I know a lot about cars. I'm gonna remind you guys that I know pretty much nothing. I'm educated in like business stuff. I went to school for business management and got a degree in business management, specifically entrepreneurship. So this isn't like a, hey, look at how good I am at working at cars. It's it's like, hey, look, this is so easy that an idiot that doesn't know how to work on cars can do it. It's really fun though learning. I'm always about doing stuff that's challenging, stuff that I've never done before because that's what's exciting, that's what makes videos fun, and that's what makes life fun. Challenge yourself, don't get lazy. Laziness sucks. It might be a little bit late, but I have a really exciting video for you tomorrow. Something really random, probably a bad decision. That'll probably be the title, probably a bad decision, but uh, any guesses? I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you.